A fast new competitor is coming to Windows. You can play Doom on your lawnmower and AMD dropping prices officially. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. We're going to start off today talking about preliminary benchmarks coming out for the Snapdragon X Elite chip, which is supposed to be Qualcomm's entry into the Windows operating system and to try to get you to switch on over to them. That's supposed to be their answer for what Apple's doing on the M1, M2, M3 side of things with Apple Silicon and the benchmark are looking quite good, especially if you compare them to something like AMD 7940HS AP. This is something that we've seen in laptops. It's been in many mobile environments, which is exactly where the Snapdragon X Elite is going to compete. And you can see that it's very, very close in single core performance to all of those, even getting very close to the 7600. It just happens to lose to the 7945HX when it comes to multi-core performance. But the only thing that's really going to stop the Snapdragon X Elite from performing is going to be Windows itself itself, especially unless Microsoft gets its head out of its butt and tries to figure out how to make ARM a little bit more versatile on Windows. It's just always going to be hampered by software. That's one of the things that Apple has as a competitive advantage. Everything's vertically integrated from their Apple Silicon all the way up until the software that they're defining on how to interact with it. Microsoft, it's 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 like the difference of a PC port from a console game. It's just you have so many different variations and it gets confusing and everything is is are, is Apple the console of the PC world? Is that the revelation I just came to? Potentially. And I want to reveal to you today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Akaflow. Akaflow is a time blocking platform that makes it very easy to consolidate all your tools in one place and block time for your tasks and your calendar. Akaflow integrates into your current software stack to consolidate all your info and drastically reduce context switching without pushing a particular methodology. Akaflow uses its universal inbox to gather tasks from other apps such as Google or Slack and then consolidates them in one convenient space so you can spend more time on what needs to get done and less time looking through apps for what you need next. With the highest number of natively integrated apps, Akaflow will keep all of your tasks right where you need them. Along with the universal inbox, Akaflow also provides you with a comprehensive calendar designed to visualize your workflow. This calendar is designed around time blocking, so you can see your tasks in a daily layout. Simply drag, drop, and add tags and labels to reorganize. Don't forget to use the built-in keyboard shortcuts to streamline your planning. Akaflow also makes it easy to add tasks even with the program not open. Picture someone assigning you a task during a video call or you have the spur of the moment idea. Simply open up the command bar anywhere in your computer and input the task. Next time you check Akaflow, your new task will be right where you assigned it. Additionally, Akaflow makes it easy to share your availability. Simply click and drag to block out time and share the link to the time slot. If you're looking to become the most productive version of yourself, try Akaflow today via the link in the description below. Thank you to Akaflow for sponsoring today's video. You know, it'd be really cool to see all of your blocked out scheduling on this new laptop from Lenovo known as Project Crystal, which is the world's first laptop with a transparent micro LED display. It's very cool for the micro LED technology. I guess it's cool for being transparent. I really can't think of many scenarios where this is helpful or reasonable. A lot of people are citing that this has sci-fi aspects and see-through displays or everything that we envision in movies of the future and potentially, but if you just look at like the transparent TVs at CES, it's just, it all depends on what you place behind it. There's a reason we have things like a, a backing to a display. It's because it helps you to see what's being displayed, regardless of the fact that the micro LED setup can get up to 3000 nits. It can get very bright, potentially could wash out anything that's going on in the environment. But at the same time, if you're trying to look at a green object on a display and it happens to be on a green background, it's hard to see and it's hard to not see everything that's going on with AI and Google wants to put it a little bit more in front of your face with you now being able to message their Gemini app in Google messages. You want to chat with your chat bot? Boy, how do you could do that straight from that little text bubble on your phone? You can get it to give you the recipe to whatever thing you're trying to dream up or it could just give you inspiration for that next little thing you want AI to do for you. Gemini will be in Google messages now. You're welcome, but Google can give and they 
it will also take away because we talked about yesterday they're getting rid of Google Pay and they're now also getting rid of the YouTube Kids TV app. You will no longer be able to have a separate app for kids to watch YouTube on the TV. Instead, you just have to now do that through the regular YouTube app and the kids will have their own separate profile, which I guess this makes sense, but it's also the same thing with the Google Pay. It's like they're transitioning to Google Wallet, but like, I don't know, it just all happens in a very complicated roundabout convoluted way, which is how we do UFD deals. Cause I'm here in America filming this episode of Hot News before Reese films UFD deals in South Africa. And now he's gonna talk to you about it. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Now I know I've been gone for a little bit, but it was important. I went down to the coast to be there when my little brother got engaged. So congratulations to them and thank you guys for being so patient i do have deals for you to make up for it starting off today with this aoc gh300 usb gaming headset for only 19 dollars 99 making it 20 dollars or 50 percent off then next up we have this epo maker th66 pro 65 percent hot swappable wireless mechanical keyboard for only 51 dollars 99 with the coupon applied making it 38 dollars off and then we have another favorite of mine with the amd ryzen 7 7800x 3d going for only 349 dollars with the included promo code making it a hundred dollars off and last but certainly not least we're taking a look at something cool thanks to our friends and channel sponsors jawa with this vaporwave 2.0 build from pc guys featuring an amd ryzen 5 3600 an rx 5700 xt 16 gigs of ddr4 and a one terabyte mvme ssd all in what i believe is the zelman m40 case i have to say this is one of the cleanest looking builds i've seen in a long time and you can pick it up for only 749 dollars and 99 cents but don't forget you can get 10 dollars off your first purchase through jawa if you use code uft10 so don't forget and and once again, thank you to Java for letting us take a look at this. You can find this and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. All right, Reese, you got some explaining to do, you semi heir to the Husqvarna empire in South Africa. Why are they putting Doom on Husqvarna lawnmowers? You can play it at 35 FPS on one of the new robot lawnmowers from Husqvarna. This is like an autonomous thing that runs around your backyard, but you can play it with the little knob that's on the Husqvarna. Lawnmower. I never dreamed of the day. I mean, you could play Doom on a ton of different things, but I, I just wasn't expecting it to be like officially supported from the company. They put out their own demo video showing off how all of this works. Reese, explain, please. How much money are you making off of this venture, Reese? I need to know, Reese. Tell me. And Intel is telling you that they have fixed some of their stuff with their GPUs. They've updated it so that PyTorch AI optimizations are now here on the Intel Arc GPUs, and specifically that it can run new Llama 2 models on the Intel hardware, but you will need at least 14 gigabytes of VRAM, so you're probably just stuck using the A770 16 gig, which, man, somebody could probably be using this right now, Kyle. <laughs> Intel just wants you to know that they're working on developing all of the software. PyTorch is an AI framework that was invented by Meta, and you can now run it on Intel GPUs. You're not just stuck with Team Red or Team Green, but if you are going Team Red and you've been uh, perusing the sale deals on the 7700 XT, it got a little bit better yesterday. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that the 7900 GRE launched to at least my personal acclaim, but I'm seeing a lot of reviews coming out on the internet that seem to poo-poo it a little bit more. The 7900 GRE is not a new graphics card. All of the reviews that came out yesterday were not the first reviews done. This card's been out in China since like July. So it's been, it's been in the rounds and it's been a very good competitor for a lot of different people. So it's interesting to see that there's been an ambivalent take on it, but the 7700 XT was probably one of the worst received GPUs by AMD that they launched in the 7000 series. And now it's getting a price drop to about $420. It has an official price drop to 490, which makes it $30 off. This is to help give it a little bit of wiggle room from the 7800 XT. It is now $80 separated from that card, but the 7800 XT likely needed a little bit of wiggle room to go down, especially since it's so close in price to the 7900 GRE. The 7900 GRE got a price drop from 649 down to 549 when it launched in the US. Now the 7700 XT is also getting a price drop so you can enjoy AMD GPUs on the cheaper in case you're looking to do that. Let me know if this entices you to pick up a 7700 XT or if this just doesn't move the needle on your purchasing decisions at all. But let's purchase some of your comments with my affection 
and attention. We got Mr. Baskin saying, love that major outlets were so quick to blame a foreign power for the AT&T outage, not their telecommunications monopoly leading to stagnation and mismanagement of resources. Anybody who has worked for AT&T at any level, retail, install, corpo, etc., knows how directionless their leadership is. I didn't see many um, outlets really blaming cybersecurity or, uh, you know, foreign power. I, I saw that it was one of the speculations because it, especially when it's happening at such broad a scale across the entire country and is affecting multiple carriers, it wasn't just AT&T, it was Verizon and T-Mobile who also had a few hiccups. Um, it, it, like, it's a question that should be asked and should be considered, but, you know, it's easier to prescribe to ignorance and incompetence what you could uh, uh, ascribe to malice which is the inverse of that saying but i did it anyways and then you got jack saying jensen wong saying we shouldn't teach kids to code because ai is a thing is like saying we shouldn't teach kids math because calculators are a thing the thing is yeah i know we still need software developers for two specific reasons who does jensen think is going to maintain and expand all these ais other ais no it's going to be programmers for the next foreseeable future the other reason is the same reason we still teach math despite having machines that can do math relatively well, nothing is perfect and you need to be able to double check the work. Ask anyone who codes and tried the AI stuff. You have to go back through the code because AI gets stuff wrong. It's supposed to just be one tool in your toolbox, not the whole freaking toolbox. That's exactly what Jensen's saying though. It is gonna be the whole toolbox. It's gonna be AI boundaries developed by AI telling you, you non-AI, you just got regular intelligence. You have to just work within the framework. I think that's kind of what Jensen was getting at was that AI will be the thing that self-corrects itself Itself, which is also uh, kind of speculated to be the singularity, which then, you know, the, the AGI takes over and instantly outpaces humanity because it can learn faster and farther than we could ever possibly conceive, dream, or imagine. Um, so I think that's what he was trying to say. I also, I, he never really said don't teach kids to code, but uh, it's, it's still that same recursive issue that's going on. Then we got Ike coming in saying tungsten carbide rings will shatter before bending and stripping skin off. Semi-malleable metal rings are the issue. I had a tungsten ring and it, it did shatter. I still prefer ones that aren't metal at all because I don't want uh, shattered metal dinging into my fingers either. And we got Doobie saying, I just bought an RX 7800 XT at the end of December. I didn't wait for the RTX supercards and deal with all the scalpers. Uh, there's not many scalpers, like scalper seems to be a thing of the past for the most part. Like it's not really been plaguing the 40 series hardly at all, but congrats on your 7800 XT. If you're enjoying it, what? No, hey, don't be bothered by it. Uh, it's not an investment, it's just for you to enjoy. Then we got Brad saying, Brett, I'm not sure what you're doing that exposes you to risk of degloving, but as a sheet metal worker, I understand your fear. That said, there are so many other gnarly things to worry about. Listen, it's it's such a small fix. I just got a silicone ring. It's not like I go around all day being like, oh man, my finger's gonna get ripped off. No, but the thing that, that broke my mind on it and made me add, decide to try to switch over to a silicone ring was Jimmy Fallon got degloved from just tripping and having his hand hit a tabletop. That's it. I've seen it happen when people have been on ladders. You just grab the rung, 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 rung. <laughs> And it's pro it's a problem. It can happen in scenarios that aren't just like a invigorated work environments where you're working with sheet metal. It's just, it can happen to the worst. It's just, it's not, it's not worth the risk in my mind. And it's again, I don't bring it up very often. It does not define my personality, but it does define what ring I'm gonna wear on my finger. How often are you on ladders? Enough that I don't want it to happen. <laughs> I'm around tabletops quite often. Then we got Kirthan saying GPay is huge in India due to UPI payment method. It is so gosh dang convenient. Almost lost my sh when I heard that headline. I don't know why they are killing it in other countries. I don't know. We don't use it. I don't. We use Google Wallet instead. It's like roughly the same thing. It's it's just being phased out for something else. It's the Google way. Just just kill and rebirth everything all at the same time. And then we got Z Shrink saying, only a few more days, everyone. Just a few more days to delicious coffee. Sorry, I might've been yelling there. I already had a few cups. Very good, smiley face. Kyler, you like the coffee? It's good. Yeah? That's what I said. I need to drink this bag. You can't, you can't stop me. I'm gonna deglove this bag down my throat. All right, that's enough for this episode of Hot News. Kyler is making me unviable. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.